Hello, my name is Robert Sinclair. I'm an artist, I'm a painter, and I have a group of work here that um, some are finished, some are not finished, but the ones that are not finished, they are very close to being finished, so I want to uh, show them to you and talk about them a little. So I'm not gonna give any background on myself because I don't want this video to be too long, but the group of paintings here, there are eight of them. Um, they are enamel on canvas. And um, the reason why I have been so busy lately painting, I feel like, like I'm just about a full-time artist right now, even though I do have, I still have a job, but I have been putting in a lot of work and it's because we are online school. And actually we just returned to in-person class, but it's um, three days a week and um, and I'm not even having art class with the elementary school yet. I will be meeting with each class once every four weeks. <laughs> and so everything else is online. So it basically is, I'm still completely teaching online. And um, before the school closed, I had a ninth grade class, ninth and 10th grade high school art class. And um, uh, I gave them assignment to make abstract paintings, to make color field abstract paintings. Didn't want them doing like Jackson Pollock or, you know, Franz Klein or, you know, de Kooning type paintings with gesture. I wanted them just doing like areas of color, stripes, shapes, you know, I showed them pictures of of uh, various artists and gave them uh, a talk on them and, you know, and, and hope to uh, inspire them. And, and they, they completed the assignments. Some did very well, others, you know, not so much. But I have all these canvases lying around as I'm here at school with not much to do. And um, I brought in my enamel paints and I painted over them, directly over the, old, the student's old work. Sorry. But anyway, um, so each painting's title is the first name of the student who painted the, 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 the surface, the ground. Anyway, so they're all about 14 by 14 inches. Like I said, enamel on canvas. And I would take whatever I was going to paint. It's usually uh, a, a linear abstract drawing. I think that's about all of them are, except for maybe one. And um, I went right over them. And then, obviously, I f as I made the drawing and I worked around, I covered the whole surface with my paint. But I would leave their paintings and, you know, what they did, and you know, I'd modify them here or there. But, you know, I, I tried to incorporate what they did in the background of the painting, of the image of the painting, you know, that I was imposing on top. So anyway, this is the first one. This one is titled um, Ishmael. And um, you see Ishmael, <clears throat> he did this like one, two, three, it was basically like a four color painting. And this kind of yellow went across and it, you know, had a extension up to the top and then it, it tapered off to the left, you know, it was a good, decent painting. It wasn't, he didn't put all that much heart into it as far as differentiating the colors or anything, but it was, it wasn't uh, just like, you know, a stripe and that's it. So, you know, I thought it was somewhat interesting. And um, <clears throat> I drew this, um, what I do generally in all my work, not all my work, I can't say ever say all, but a lot of my work, I do abstract, I call them abstract surreal drawings. I. I draw suggestive images that are influenced, obviously, by, by graffiti. Um, I, like I said, the abstract art, surreal, kind of mind poking is what I try to do. Try to get you to think, try to get your subconscious kicking, get you some feelings and some, some deep um, kind of connection, hopefully, to the image and something in your, in your back of your brain. Um, so my symmetrical drawing, and then as I go and I develop, I add these little characteristics up here, these little bubble type things, because I've been 
checking out a lot of uh you know murakami type art i think that kind of looks neat and these these kind of drippy legs going off <clears throat> and um i added another color down here before i put these white they kind of like upside down bullets or something but they're not they're, they're really supposed to be teeth um but i painted this rectangle down here and then i painted this blue stripe and it was these two were different colors of purple, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, you know, just really just taking what the student started with and advancing it a little bit into my own, um, my own sensibility. And that is, you know, that's kind of new for me, to be honest with you, doing little things like this in the space and, and putting little extensions off of my solid drawing usually i was just like drawing here's my drawing i'm going to paint it whether i paint it solid with a solid outline and just a one background color or where the background color has a blend whether the painting inside the paint has a blend whether the outline has a blend there's tons of variations that i was already doing now i'm adding more like this this blue down here because this rectangle was separate from this rectangle separate from this yellow marker and then so on and so forth. So I did each one kind of differently. And then this down here, what st I, I see things in my own work, obviously. So I saw a face, you know, I see eyes. I see like a nose, like a skull-ish nose. And then, so I made these teeth down here. And the teeth were from, I was been looking at Aztec and Mayan art a lot lately. And uh, I was influenced by Quetzalcoatl who is um, the plumed serpent. And they often have heads of Quetzalcoatl coming out of, uh, off the walls of, you know, stone pyramids. And, and so that's where I got this. The teeth are, if you look at them from the side, they're curved and they're kind of rounded at the end. And that's, that's how I made these, you know, just obviously they're not curved, they're straight ahead. But this is a reference to Aztec art and Quetzalcoatl. So anyway, this is Ishmael, not done. Paint on it a few more times and it should be done. Next one is Alex. This one's Alex. And um, Alex did a painting with just a, a circle and um, I guess there was a blend of colors in the circle and then the background also had a, a I think it might have had different colors like in uh, vertically going across. But I changed that obviously. I did my symmetrical drawing, but this time I have two of them, one on top of the other. And that's a kind of a variation that I have used before, not very often, but I do use it and I'll use it again. Um, and you, you try to make it simple, you try to make them work together. And um, and then this circle, I obviously turned into like this cloud-ish um, clover looking shape in the background. And um, I'm just working this out. I'm still, I still got some work to do up around the borders here of the edges of these shapes. Got a few more times to work on this, but this one is Alex, I kind of like it. It's this strong yellow and the green. And there's some fades going on, different shades of the brown. Um, nothing too crazy, but you know, I think it works. I think it's a strong painting. Next one is called, this one is Alyssa. Alyssa made a abstract painting. I don't know who, to, who I would say it looked like, but it wasn't too good. It wasn't, I mean, you know, it was good, but it wasn't great anyway, even for ninth graders. But um, so I did the symmetrical drawing, but this one's different because the symmetrical drawing is not connected. It's two drawings side by side. Instead of usually my symmetrical drawings are joined in the middle somewhere at the top or on the bottom. But this one is just two separate drawings next to each other. It's the first time I've done this. Um, but what I did before was I did, I just took a brush and I made these kind of 
they were not symmetrical. This was totally just, I don't even know why I did this, but I'm gonna do it in the future. I'm doing it now on some other paintings at home. Um, I did an underpainting that I knew I was gonna paint over. And really all of Alyssa's work is gone. This is part of Alyssa's work, this black, this red and where this black separates and everything else is pretty much gone that she did. So you can see the least of what she did in her painting in this one. Uh, got a little bit more work to do on this. This sort of looks like a digital situation, like a computer, physical computer motherboard or whatever they have. I'm not very computer savvy, but it does look like digital, you know, inside of a computer, at least the way they used to look back, you know, when I would look at them. Anyway, so not much to say. Oh, this one is symmetrical, both right to left and top and bottom. So I do that as well. I don't, uh, I have different ways of approaching this symmetrical drawing business. There's really no face or anything in this one. There's nothing um, I'm trying to really kind of sneak in there and, and, and try to get you to think about. Mm -hmm. This one is um, Catherine. Catherine was, uh, still is, uh, one of my best artists. She's very, very talented. Um, she um, painted this with these stripes. I painted over them, you know, so it has changed. But she was doing these kind of circular overlaps, over, overlapping circle, circular shapes. Um, and then for whatever, it was just a really bizarre looking painting. I really loved it. And um, <clears throat> whatever reason, she had these stripes in the middle. And, and you see how I painted them very irregularly because I'm really copying her. Like she painted them irregularly. They were not neat, straight, clean circles uh, or lines. They were, they, were, um, they were like that, but in acrylic and they were more, less, less opaque. And, you know, so coming with the enamel, obviously everything gets op becomes opaque and, and, and stronger in my opinion. Um, I mean, I know you can get that with acrylic, but not with the acrylics we have here at school because they're, they're pretty cheap. Um, this is one of my favorite backgrounds. And, you know, obviously, like I said, I developed it. I made it mine and, and it, it just gives you ideas. It gave me ideas on what to do with backgrounds and like, why not? Like put something there that you need to react to. Because here I am with my symmetrical drawing, once again. I fit the symmetrical drawing to the painting. I saw this thing in the middle, I wanted to preserve that, so I drew this thing, which is sort of like a frame, if you will. Uh, somebody referred to it, it looked like a coat of arms, you know? Hey, sure. And um, um, this one has a bit of work to do yet on it, but I, I really like what's happening here. And, and um, so basically what happened with these, this painting series, I thought it'd be kind of cool and kitschy, you know, to like paint over students work, you know, and like, and now it's, it's become something of my own where like, I'm gonna paint generic abstract paintings. But for me, painting generic abstract paintings is like fun. It's like, I can get pretty serious with that stuff, but they're really only made so I can paint over them with what I do, which is these images. I make images. The images are what it's all about. So that's why before, many times, I'll just paint that image and it'd be like one color background, one color on the inside and one color outline. And that's a strong painting for me. I'm happy with that because it's the image, in my opinion, related to my work that is the meat and potatoes of the art. It's like this, the image, it's like the drawing. It's the most important thing. And everything else you do with the color and the painting technique, and that, that's like gravy on top. But now the background is, 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 is taking a whole new level of importance. Because you, you, on one hand, it's like cheesy and it's kitschy where I'm like, oh, I'm making a generic abstract painting. I wouldn't go out and like say, here's my art. And this is just generic abstract painting, meaning like 
I don't, I'm not trying to put anybody down. I'm just saying like, it's something that I would have done in art school, you know, and I would have done, you know, very seriously and, and, and very happily and, and, and put my heart into, but, and I still do. But now I know it's something to be painted over. Doesn't mean I'm not taking it seriously. I'm very much taking it seriously, just not standing on its own. It is something for me to paint my images on, which I really feel are important. All right. So next, now we're starting to get closer to the ones that are finished. This one is Dustin. And uh, Dustin, this painting was awesome. I loved this painting. He painted this like blue, and the colors are pretty much the same. It was blue, orange, red, and this black. But there was something about it. Like it wasn't real sharp the way I have it. And um, like some of the, the, the colors blended on the edges. And it, it was, I thought it was just really great. Like, and this guy wasn't like such a sensitive artist guy. He kind of was just like a like a, a doodler, if you will. Like even when he when he was working with paint, it's just like, yeah, let me do another one. Let me do another one, you know. And and he 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 just really captured something with this. It was kind of like a, a mountain or a, or a house. I, I I couldn't really. It was very surreal in a way. And um and I really liked it. And so now this one, I have my symmetrical abstract images. I have two of them. I, I I'm not really sure why I decided to do two. I don't know whether I had that in mind when I first saw the canvas or not, or whether I just did this one and I felt this needed something up here. I, I don't know what the, the thought process was on that, but I, I like this one. Um, like I said, the, the basic, what the student did is, is there. I put all this ornamentation and uh, different colors uh, on top of it, obviously, but the shape is still there and it's very strongly there. Um, and uh, I, I mean, this shape is, is not too interesting in my opinion. It's sort of, it's not one of the most thought evoking of my drawings in my opinion. Um, but what I love about this is the what I did with the paint. So here I am again, really kind of reaching with the with the painterliness if you will like these are the things that I didn't really engage in before because I was so serious and I don't want to just be playing and all that stuff <coughs> excuse me but the playing kind of worked out <coughs> and um so you know modulating different blues and they're blending and different greens in different areas. And this part is really un the most unfinished. This um, character kind of looks like an alien. They kind of both look like aliens. These ones are kind of hinting towards aliens and, um, you know, creatures and things and a, a mountain. And, and I like what I did here with the, with the sky background. I don't know what inspired me on that. I'm trying to remember. Um, somebody must have, I must have seen something and, and thought of that. But anyway. I like the way it's going. It goes from darker to light, darker to light. And um, I just think it works. I'm very happy with this. I'm very looking forward to finishing that. Okay, now we finally get to some that are finished. And this one is called Deacon. Deacon and Dustin were like best friends. And... Um, Deacon's painting was also awesome. If you you know you can see the the background, it's pretty much the way that that Deacon made it. But like I again, a lot of the edges I cleaned up because there might have been overlapping uh, layers of acrylic that were transparent. And but this is generally what it was. This one definitely looked like a house. Dustin's kind of looked more like a mountain. And. Um, I just love the, it's like, it's so graphic. It's like a flag almost. Like, it, it, it's very symmetrical, the background I'm talking about. And um, and it, it just, it just it worked so well for him as a painting, worked so well for me as a background. And I don't need to do any 
doodly doos off the side, any little extras or dots or, or teeth or anything. No, 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 this is fine, just the way it is. Less is more with this. And this symmetrical drawing, just keep it simple. Very good drawing, I felt, strong. And, um, well, you know, obviously you can see, uh, I guess the gray, I don't know what I would consider the outline. Maybe the white is the outline and then there's gray, lighter brown and dark brown on the inside. Yeah, that's probably how I would say it. Because sometimes, obviously, graffiti writers know this. You got your outline and then you got a third color. Another color which is on the outside. And I was trying to decide if that white was like a, a third color, but no, that's probably the outline and all the different colors are probably just inside. So anyway, this is um, Deacon. Feel good about this one. I like this. Think it came off pretty well. This one is finished. And this one is Michael. And Michael sat next to Catherine. So I think Michael kind of was copying Catherine with the overlapping circular shapes. And again, just, just absolutely brilliant. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, didn't look so good, obviously, when it was just acrylic paint, thin acrylic paint. Because you know, you, you to get these kids to, all right, good, looks good. Do another layer. You know, like it's it's kind of hard, but it just it just worked out incredible. And I and I incredibly, and I and I did this drawing. This drawing is a symmetrical drawing, obviously. But again, we have symmetrical top and bottom and side to side. So this one is of that kind of, um, you know, idea. And uh, I, I just, I think this thing looked, turned out great. I think it really, really references like African art and, um, you know, obviously aliens always, the aliens are always involved, but uh, this one is, um, I feel very strongly about this one. This one might be my favorite. The next one, the last one I showed you might be my favorite. Or the next one I show you might be my favorite. But this one is um, is excellent. I'm very happy with it. And uh, Michael, you know, I, 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 I think I've like said everything about that that is working in this painting previously already. You know, like the strength of the Deacon was, is very similar to the strength of this. Like, there's no need to tell you, you know, like, oh gosh, the, the simplicity and the, the, the balance and the da-da-da. You can see, it's, it's, it was well done. And then all I did was make it more opaque. All right, the last one. This one is Josie. And this one is different than all the rest. Um, because when I started getting back into painting, I did a lot of these, um, like I'll call them 90 degree angle drawings where all of my lines went in 90 degree angles. There were no diagonals, there were no curves. And, um, and I still, I'm gonna do these, I'm gonna do more of these, you know, but that's just a way for me to do 